Hello, Real Vision viewers. Today, I'm very excited to bring you Zuko Wilcox. Zuko's fingerprints can be seen more or less all across the world of encryption and applied computer science, uh, notably the, the Tahoe LAFS, the decentralized file storage system, the Blake hash functions. But today, he's probably best known to us as the founder of Zcash, the first privacy coin on Web3. So Zuko, welcome to Real Vision. Thank you. Glad to be here. Likewise. Well, uh, an hour feels insufficient, I think, to cover your story, but let's uh, dive straight I'll in. talk fast. Yeah, I think we better. Uh, the first really is, is uh, what got you initially, in the very early days, uh, involved in encryption in the first place? How did you come to this? The very first thing that happened was I uh, learned how to dial up my home computer to VBSs, which was the thing before the internet for some of us. And you could download files from BBSs and a file that I downloaded contained PGP, the encryption program. And it came with a little text document. I think it was called pgp1.doc or pgp1.txt or something like that. And that little text document was a manifesto from the author that said something to the effect that it's a human right that people should be able to talk privately and we should retain that right even while we move up to having computer networks. And so it was motivating. And then the, I guess the next thing that happened was uh, there was a grand jury convened by someone in the U.S. government to investigate whether that guy was guilty of exporting weapons illegally by writing and uploading that file. Or not the text file, but the, the program, PGP. And so he became a cause celeb. Um, and that really motivated me. The combination of his, Phil Zimmerman was his name, his uh, manifesto that privacy and, and private conversations are a natural human right, combined with the government trying to put him in jail for it, that was really motivating. And I was like 17, I think. I'm already saying this, I think this is uh, Phil Zimmerman you're talking about. So he was the uh, the persecuted prophet who, who who got you into encryption in in the very first place. Um, so so on to uh, Zcash. I'd love to do a kind of just a, a quick summary of you know what is Zcash? Uh, why is it different from all the other things that we're looking at in 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 Web three? Um, uh -huh. we'll, we'll dive into the into the backstory around it uh, later on. But uh, but can you just in a in a nutshell tell us what it is? Zcash is a cryptocurrency that's open source and decentralized like Bitcoin. The thing that everyone knows about it is not the most important thing in my view, but the most important thing in everyone else's view is that it comes with encryption built in so that you can have private data in a public blockchain. Um, and it's it may be the only one, I think. I'm sorry if I'm overlooking some some others, but at least it was the first and it's the biggest blockchain that has that property. Perfect, and uh, and just from a structural perspective, uh, I think it's well known, obviously, that you're, you're the founder of Zcash, but uh, Zcash uh, comprises the blockchain, but also there is this uh, electric coin company, uh, which uh, develops, uh, supports um, the security uh, of, of Zcash. You're CEO of that company, and it's functionally sovereign. So can you explain a little bit uh, uh, how uh, the electric coin company relates to Zcash? Yeah, just like I said that everyone knows something about Zcash and I disagree and they know that the fact that it has encryption built in is the important thing. And I think there are more important things about it that no one knows. Also, everyone knows that I'm the founder of Zcash, but that might not be exactly true. Like there are many founders of Zcash, but I'm like the spokesperson. We uh, we rolled dice to see who would have to take the fall, and it was me. <laughs> and well, so okay, that's not exactly how it went down, but so, um, I, what I'm at, the, the truth that I'm actually getting at is that Zcash is a lot more uh, decentralized and resilient uh, than you might think. Um, so that so I can be a spokesperson, I can uh, go on shows and explain stuff. Um, and that's helpful. And I can initiate ideas through my role as CEO of ECC. Um, but if I get hit by a bus, it's not going to slow Zcash down very much at all. Um, 
And you so say your question was the structure of ECC. Well, okay, so uh, so the, the the story is some scientists came up with some a, a method to combine encryption with blockchains. Actually, previous to that story, uh, Satoshi and Hal Finney and others talked about in the early days when when Bitcoin was was it was live, but it was very nascent. It was very young, and they talked about. Satoshi and Hal Finney and, and almost everyone who had anything to do with Bitcoin for the first eight years really valued privacy. Like privacy was really the basically the, the animating principle. Privacy and um, a monetary policy that's independent of central banks were the two animating principles of Bitcoin. And um so Satoshi and, and Hal and the others talked about wh whether we could figure out a way to add privacy to Bitcoin. And they even considered using the zero knowledge proof technique. That's the technique that later worked in Zcash. But at the time that they were talking about it, zero knowledge proofs weren't efficient enough in practice. To, it wouldn't, couldn't actually make it work. And then the next step that happened was uh, in about 2013 or so, some sci a big group of scientists from a bunch of different universities, the United States and Israel, and um, figured out a way to combine encryption and blockchain. Um, and, and I wasn't one of them, so that's an example of how I'm not really the sole founder of Zcash at all. They, these scientists came up with this, and they published a paper. And um, <laughs> one of the one of the scientists who uh, wrote the paper was named Matt Green. And I had read the paper. I was super excited about it because it was the first time I had seen a, a way to make really strong cryptographic strength prote privacy protection in a blockchain. Um, the other things I'd seen, like mixers and Monero and things like that, I just considered to be not long uh, long term solutions um, because they leak information. They're not like cryptographic strength. They're like uh, much weaker than cryptography. So. Um, so I was really excited about that paper that they had written, and I, I went to a cryptography conference where Matt Green was giving a talk about his paper. And I was like the first one in line at the microphone to ask questions at the end, and because um, I was so excited. And the, the question I asked was, okay, that's great, but what about that setup process? So there's a thing in the cryptography they had invented, the zero knowledge proof. So again, Satoshi tried to add zero knowledge proofs to Bitcoin and couldn't because they weren't at all... They're completely impractical back in the day in like 2009 or whenever, 2010, whenever they were talking about that. And then um, these scientists invented a new generation of zero knowledge proofs, which were so optimized that it would be possible to actually embed them into every transaction in a blockchain. And that was that paper. But it came with a catch, which was that to generate that system, you had somebody had to make up some random parameters. And if that person remembered the secret seed for how they did that, they could use that secret seed to cheat. So that was my first question. I was at the mic and I was like, okay, that's great. But what about that secret seed? If uh, you know if somebody keeps it, then they can generate counterfeit coins. And that's not good enough. Like people won't trust that the monetary base is sound if it has that flaw. And he said, well, we can like, have a computer and we can have a bunch of video cameras pointed at it and we can generate the secret seed and then we can just drop it into a fire or something. And I said, that's not good enough. People won't trust that that wasn't a trick. And I think he was irritated because I was like heckling him in his, <laughs> his presentation. He said, fine, you figure it out. <laughs> he called me a few weeks later and said, you know, I think what happened about that time is Dogecoin was taking off. Dogecoin, what do we call it? He said something in a Twitter or his blog or something like, if people buy Doge, they'll buy anything. Uh, so he called me and he said, you know, we really want, we scientists who invented this concept, we really want it to be a real widely used thing like Bitcoin. And we're starting to realize that this won't happen as a side effect of our grad students' PhDs. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Um, and I had, since he knew about my work with Tahoe LAFS, he thought of me as someone who could actually get implemented and deployed sophisticated cryptography that had never been deployed before. So he said, would you do it? And I said, no. 
I, 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 I said, well, I, you know, I've, um, I'm in the middle of working on other stuff. And I thought to myself, privacy is a really good social value. It's a human right, like Phil Zimmerman had said decades earlier. And, and people need it and they're losing it because of the internet and not because of their choice and not because it's good for society, but because the internet allows corporations and governments to take it from them. So I thought that's really, I would love to help with that, but Bitcoin has a head start. And so Bitcoin will be the mainstream thing and anything we could do would just be a niche thing that only a few people would use if they were especially sensitive or motivated. And that's not good enough. If it's a niche thing, then it's not really gonna change the world. So I said, no. And then I slept on it and I called him back the next day and I said, wait, wait, wait. Yes. Uh, because after I thought about it overnight, I thought, no, wait, privacy is necessary for commerce. You've got to have privacy to send your paychecks and take payments from customers and make investments and make deals and have your savings and everything. So privacy, the thing that protects people's information can be the mainstream thing that can take over from Bitcoin and anything else and be the, the standard thing that everyone on the planet uses. So that's why I decided to go ahead and do it. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to like and subscribe for more crypto related content. Also, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com slash crypto.